One of the characteristics of our digital world is that we collect very large amounts of information automatically. Uh, we don't consciously intervene in recording that data. It's collected from devices that we use. It's put into our record systems. It's there. But it's really important to bear in mind that although we might collect that information automatically, we do not report on it automatically. So reporting always requires us to think very carefully about what the purpose of reporting is. What do you want to achieve in the reporting? Who are we reporting to? Have we thought carefully about the implications of our reporting? So for example, one of the applications that many universities and colleges have used are early warning systems to identify students at risk. And we now understand how to do that. But it would very rarely be good practice to automatically report to the student that they're at risk without an intervention that helps that student respond appropriately to that information. So what will happen in an early warning system is that the automated response will go to a tutor, for example, a person in the university, who will then interpret that report before contacting the student in an appropriate manner. Another example might be a student dashboard where we are following the broad Fitbit culture of helping students to pace their own performance. We need to think very carefully about the implications of automatically reporting that data to the student who's generating it. How are they going to read and interpret it? How are they going to understand it? Is it open to the correct interpretation? At a different scale, uh, if you are a teacher, we don't want to burden you automatically with reams and reams and reams of data. We want to understand exactly what it is that you want to learn about the students in your class, and we need to customise the report appropriately to your needs. So reporting always requires careful thought and design so that we use this data to best effect. We all live in a data-rich world, so increasingly data literacy is a form of basic literacy that we all need to interpret that world, and it doesn't matter whether we're talking about learning analytics or any aspect of our lives. But of course, data literacy is, is, is relative. We don't need to know every aspect uh, of the meaning of data. We need a data literacy level that's appropriate to our needs. So when we think about the full range of requirements across a really complicated organisation like a university or a college, we have to think of data literacy needs from the point of the student right through to the specialist administrator who works with very rich sources of data all of the time. So in order to make learning analytics work within any organisation, we have to get a very good appraisal of what those data literacy needs are, and we need to put in place the appropriate training and information basis for people to gain that literacy, because it's not necessarily that something that comes naturally. It's also not something that's static. Uh, as information becomes richer and richer, the data literacy demands become greater. But the good news, I think, is that we are all understanding more and more that the quality of the interface is absolutely crucial. And we're getting better and better at readable, easily to understand interfaces that help us with data literacy problems. So good design takes into account the user experience. It makes it as easy as possible to interpret and understand this information. The basic point that we hold on to all the time is on a day-to-day -day basis, in the everyday operation of very complicated organizations, we want everybody involved in the learning journey to understand better what that is about uh, through appropriate levels of data literacy. So what does data literacy mean in practice? That it very much depends on the professional needs of the person. So for an academic staff member who's busy, who's looking after <clears throat> a large number of students across a couple of classes, they need an easily interpretable dashboard which tells them at a glance what their students are doing. And that sort of level of data literacy is often the need to be able to very quickly read um, exceptions. Students are doing exceptionally well, students who are at risk, to understand the trends as they emerge across a class so that you can get back into that class very quickly and respond in real time. So the level of data literacy that a teacher will need probably refers to that everyday need of monitoring the learning environment when it's in process. From the student's point of view, a student uh, 
needs a level of data literacy that understands their personal performance in comparison with their peers. Uh, and that can be achieved by good dashboards that students will find readily available on mobile devices, for example. At the other end of the spectrum, of course, any institution is likely to have data specialists, data scientists, people who work with the VLE, people who work with financial data. Their level of data literacy is going to be far more demanding. They're going to need to understand the full sets of tables of data uh, so that they can do secondary analysis on them uh, to develop forecasts, to develop financial reports, uh, to develop public reports, to predict and analyze uh, the way that a university is performing in public indicators like the Teaching Excellence Framework. So again, it's very much geared towards the needs of the job or the needs of the learner. One of the reasons why data literacy is important is because no dashboard can be perfect. So a dashboard is a, a useful device that helps us to interpret. So let's take driving as an analogy, for example. You've got a dashboard in front of you uh, that tells you what speed you're going, the revs of your engine, how much fuel you've got. But you don't drive by just looking at the dashboard. You use a whole other range of intelligent interpretation about the road to drive safely. So you are literate in terms of understanding your journey along the road. So similarly, in the world of learning analytics, uh, it wouldn't be advisable ever to try and reduce the richness of learning analytics down to a single dashboard. The dashboard is a device that helps you to organize your world very simply and see things in one place. But your data literacy helps you to interpret things. So for example, um, let's take a student who is maybe showing a quite a low level of physical attendance on the campus. I mean, maybe the information that's being picked up uh, on their attendance record is showing uh, that they're not on the campus very often. Now, you might be personally insulted by the fact that that means they haven't come to your lectures, for example. But it would be wrong automatically to interpret that student at being at risk if you didn't look at their grades, because maybe their grades are very good. Maybe they're an exceptional student whose learning style is such that they don't want to come to the conventional class, they don't need to come onto the campus, but they're doing really well. So your data literate person will look at a whole variety of sources, triangulate them against each other, and come to a conclusion about how that student's doing uh, within the course. And I think using data in an intelligent way depends on a level of data literacy that, that we can use to interpret data sets against each other and come to sensible conclusions. Enhancing data literacy in terms helps us to move towards a far richer data-informed culture. So what does that mean? Well, the value in a data-informed culture is several fold. First of all, of course, it enables us to see things that we couldn't have seen before. So as we look across the interpretations of these really informative and complex data sets that we have, as, we are, as there are more and more data literate people in an organization, we can see things. And seeing things helps us to understand. And understanding the complexity of learning helps us to teach better. So there's a direct relationship uh, in terms of data literacy and a data informed culture. The other thing that it helps us to do is to move away from some of our assumptions and some of our prejudices because we're able to see people far more as individuals. We all make assumptions. We tend to make assumptions in university life, for example, uh, that teaching and learning is and should be the way it was when we were students. Now that is an obvious human thing to do, but it doesn't make a great deal of sense. We need to interpret new generations in terms of their reference points, their needs and their abilities. It enables us to put aside assumptions on race, assumptions on gender, assumptions on socioeconomic background, assumptions about the way people speak uh, that tend to be old fashioned and rather prejudicial shortcuts to interpret what's happening in a classroom. Because of course, in a data informed culture, the data is neutral of those sorts of assumptions. So by fostering uh, a data-informed culture across an institution, we basically become better at what we do.